Hey everybody, sorry I completely forgot to film a Fred Crumbs video, but I have something even better. So on April Fool's Day, I participated in the Table Turf Battle Open number 8, the April Fool's Edition that was hosted by the Table Turf Battle server, a Discord I've been part of for a couple of months now. So they always do these little uh, tournaments on the weekends, and the next one that's coming up is the Baby Jelly Cup. So if you want to play against me, you should join the Discord. Get in here. There's only five people in here, so right now you got a pretty good chance of playing me on Saturday. It's in four days, so get in there. Join join the Discord. So, but anyway, the April Fool's edition of the Table Turf Battle Open was really interesting because it was the only map we could play on was uh, box seats, and the timer was set to 10 seconds only. It was crazy. It was double elimination, best of five, and it was a whole lot of fun. So I've got video of that right now, and we're gonna take a look at it. So let me just close this and start this. I'm getting better at this now. I, um, I'm too lazy to 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 uh, edit it completely, but I just sort of hit record and whenever I have a match. So I missed a couple, but it's okay. I got most of it. I think. So, I'm the host, I set to 10 seconds, and we're going on to box seats. So, I have a new deck here, Frederick Crumbs. Hold on, let me just hold on, hold on, okay. So, I've got a whole bunch of really, really tiny cards. I think um, my total is about 100 or so. So, what I did here is 8 really small-ish cards, a couple medium-sized cards, and then um, 4 really big cards, and 1 single 312. And that's what I ran the entire tournament. And I think it worked pretty okay for a deck that I didn't really test out much. And it's called Frederick Crumbs because this um, this was the deck I was going to play against uh, with Fred Crumbs for the video. But you know what? This is even better. So maybe we'll just skip the Fred Crumbs video? I don't know. I love Fred Crumbs a whole lot though, so maybe not. But anyway, <laughs> let's get on with it. So I think this deck was... Eh, it could have been better. I... Blocked myself off a couple a couple times like this. Oh, and if you're confused about why this is the Frederick Crumbs deck, uh, Fred Crumbs plays on this map during his whole thing. So I got a great hand here. I've got one big card, and I've got my 312. I don't want to use it early, but okay, so 10 seconds. I don't have a lot of time to talk and think about these, so I'm just going nuts. So first thing I try to do is block off my opponent, and of course my opponent's going to try to do the same. Josiah did pretty good. Um, I've got a Squiffer, a, a nice long card, because they're going to block off horizontally. I'm going to try and go the other way, see if I can get them there. And I do manage to get them. I've got them sort of blocked off. Um, I've got half the map now. So I'm going to continue going around, just to see if I can keep going. Like, because the center, they're going to try to take the center. And they're going to try to block me off. So I'm just going to keep trying to snake my way around my opponent. Grab my nice long E-leader, stick that right on top. I don't want it to get blocked too much. Now they're trying to snake around here, so what I should be doing is maybe trying to block them. Um, but what I was really focused on was building a lot of special, because on box seats you really, really, really need all the special you can get. Because on the last three or four turns, you want to just be overlapping all your cards onto your opponent's turf, because they're going to be doing the exact same. Because there's, we're going to run out of turf very quickly, like, look how small box seats is, and you have no time to think, you just have to get your cards out as fast as possible, so you don't run out of time. I think during the entire tournament, I ran out of car- or I ran out of time maybe, like, five times. Like, I- I did a lot better than I expected, because, like, I was just so nervous, but so was everyone else, which was the thing. So, I- basically brought everything- everyone was brought down to my level of nervousness, so we were all on an even playing field. So I, now we're at four turns left, uh, we both have a ton of specials, so I'm gonna start overlapping all of my blocks onto theirs, just try to get a little bit more uh, space. Uh oh, I'm having trouble trying to find a good spot. And like the big cards, if you have to really think about it, it you're gonna run out of time on a, on, on a blitz tournament like this. Like during the card placement is when you want to be thinking about where you're placing your next card. No time wasted. And like here, I can tell that I, I was panicking a little so I just placed it there. A lot of panic moves here. <laughs> so I'm wasting two special right now. I'm not gonna be able to get those last two special points. Total waste, but it's okay. I've gotten five anyway. 
There's nowhere I can play this, so I just go for a sort of medium card, Lil Judd. I love putting Lil Judd in my in my decks. It works great on box seats, it works great on everything because it's just so versatile. Because he's it's kind of a squat card, it won't be too hard to place. Um, I never really found a lot of trouble trying to get a card like Lil Jet in, but man, this was so close. That triple ink strike um, at the end there, that was crazy. Perfect move. I don't have triple ink strike, I don't think. So if I did, I would totally swap that out uh, for the, what did I have? Ink Storm, I think. I would totally swap it out um, because certain 312s, are better than others on box seats specifically. Like the Ink Storm and the Triple Ink Strike are always really great. A lot of people use those. I would not recommend something like the Booyah Bomb because it's really hard. Like, people are going to be placing their specials all throughout the map constantly. You're not going to be able to get that perfect circle. You're not going to be able to get a, um, a, a stamp in there. What else? It's going to be really hard to get a big bubbler. Um, but it is a little versatile. You you just want to get something that's sort of small and compact. Alright, so anyway, I get a nice hand with the dynamo roller here, blocking off your opponent with that. Um, they're gonna get through, but I'm just gonna try to reach up anyway because you don't want to get blocked, but you want to block your opponent, like always. Um, and it's very easy to get blocked on box seats, and I just got blocked super hard here. I don't know why I placed it there. I must have been panicking. Like, you want to reach to the all corners of the map if possible. You want to position your specials in the center towards your enemy's um, zones. Like, I've got good special placement on the right side there, but the whole left side, um, they could just block me off here. And I'm just trying to build up special to get through. Because if I can't get through, they're going to be able to get into my zone. They've got um, some okay special placement, like down in the bottom right there. Um, Josiah can move in through the bottom, just unimpeded, like if they had a squiffer or something. So I'm just trying to position my special up into their zone, see if I can get past their defenses. I don't want to get blocked. I'm already as blocked as possible. Alright, so that works out for me. I am able to get my special touching their blue zone, so I could like put down that, that uh, squiffer there. Or, but I, I instead opt to use a special to gain three special, which is okay. They're going for the Octopod. We're tied in special points. I am down in points. Very dangerous for me. So what I'm doing here is I am focusing on building a wall of special points so that whole bottom left corner is protected because they are going to try to move down around the right side there. Triple Ink Strike Pass. It's very sad. They could have, they could have played that. I would have saved it. Um, don't be too scared of passing, but also you don't want to be passing willy nilly, you know? Because uh, sometimes just getting the special point can be enough to win you a game. But if it turns out that you could have totally used a card somewhere and you ended up passing on it like three turns ago, that's the worst feeling in the world. And here I am panicking a little bit because I thought I could fit in my Takaroka, but I couldn't think quite fast enough, so I did not. I'd go for the Squiffer here. Yeah, there we go. Flip it around, flip it around. Oh, um, yep, yeah, flip it. Yeah, okay. Just for those uh, six points there. Because I don't see anything else where I'd be able to get it as fast. Oh, it's like, so we're all tied up here. Um, I'm struggling to get that ink strike in. Oh, there it is, and I find it. Oh, man. So yeah, like, right now you want to be thinking about your next, well, it's the last turn, but like, right when you're placing, as soon as your card is placed, you're thinking about your next move for a Blitz tournament. Um, I can't wait to try out another kind of 10 second limit tournament, but on like a bigger map, because there, instead of, like, 10 seconds works perfectly on box seats because the map is so small, you don't have to struggle to place your card, like, all the way on the other side of the map. But on something like River Drift, or square squared, you're going to be spending half the time moving your card, so you basically only have five seconds to think about your next move. While here, it, it takes like two seconds to move to the correct position, if you've been thinking about it. So, great Takaroka right in the center. Um, I also get all my big cards, basically. This is the perfect hand for me. All my big cards right away. So, if you are able to get 
super high up in points early game. It's basically secured for you. Ooh, and they little Jed right on top of my special, so I'm down one special. But yeah, I this is a great combo. I love this. You lead right into the Takaroka. But now I am up a crazy amount of points, so I'm not as pressed to well, like you should always be trying your best. But I'm, I'm. It takes a little bit of the stress off, you know, when you have like something to fall back on, which is your points. And here they are trying to close up that gap. I've got no special built up, so I'm gonna go for a three right here. And I don't want to give them any free special, but sometimes you just have to. Especially if you have no time to think whatsoever. So, ooh, and I panic and I put it there. I guess I just really wanted to get a blocker and that's also touching their zone so I can get in there later rather than opting to put it in the bottom left because that is contestable space and you don't want your opponent to have it so you might as well just grab it while you can. But now I've got really nothing to put in the bottom left unless I still have that Octopod? I don't remember. Um, but I'm gonna start using my special at turn five. And they are tent attacking. I don't. Do I have that card? I don't think I have that card. I should really put that card in my deck if I do. Hmm. Because it's very versatile. It's great at grabbing you special. I still would never put in the. What's that one pointer that's just a special point? Uh. I can't remember now. <laughs> oh no. I'm blanking because I'm panicking. And see, look, I've got no special point. If I flipped it around, I think I could have made it? No, maybe not. But I didn't have special pointed in, I ran out of time, and I, pa I had to auto pass on that turn. Incredibly sad. But we're still good, we still have point time. Uh, we still have two turns left. Classic Squiffer, almost perfect placement? No, that is perfect placement, great. Eight points. And then I still have a ton of special, and I should be thinking about my next move here. Maybe the, ooh, I don't know. Try slasher. Yeah, that's okay, I guess. Perfect try slasher. Five points, five points. And they're gonna ink strike, and it's gonna be close. Oh, look at that. Ink strike never has a problem in box seats. Even though it's kind of wide, it has all the space. Er, it, it's, it's easily maneuverable, you know? All right, that's crazy. So I take this one. Good job, Josiah. Oh. I'm stressed just watching this. I can't. And like, here's all here's all my friends in here. We're all in here. My next match is against Sorcil. All right. Ready for a new deck. Best of five is crazy. It's like you end up playing the same person for so long and you get to start to know their deck because it's not like someone has like five different decks just for box seats. That's crazy. When you're building a deck for box seats, I recommend you keep it under 100. But if you are playing, okay, play against Fred Crumbs three games in a row, then play against Staff three games in a row and see how your deck holds up because Staff has a much smaller deck than Fred Crumbs. Um, and she plays sort of balanced versus Fred Crumbs, who I'm not sure what he's doing. He's kind of all over the place, but I love him so much. He's so cute. He's my big favorite. Fred Crumbs forever. Crumbs cult. All right, anyway, so Sorcil is blocking me off very early. I'm going for special. I'm not sure what I'm doing. It's because I'm getting all my small cards. There's not really much I can do at this point. But I do want to be building up special. I want to be building a wall defending my own territory. Like, see, I've got special dispersed in the centers. I'm turning my specials into the wards the centers. You don't want your special points touching the walls too much because like an opponent can get right through that. But if you've got them like all over the place in the middle, they're gonna have a lot harder, a way harder time trying to get like maneuver a, a, a triple ink strike through like a wall like that I've got on the left side there. All right, I'm going early for the Octo Missile, grabbing myself a free point. Kind of a weird move. Not sure why I did that. They're going for the little Jed right at the bottom. They've gotten all the sides of the map here. They've got a great lead, but they have no special built up because I've blocked them off. So they're gonna want to grab one special, there we go, two special for them, and then get those three clustered at the top there if they can. And what am I gonna do? Oh, I, if I had more points, I could place down my, my dynamo roller. 
They're gonna try Slasher, grab themselves four points. That's an incredible move. But what they've got now is a big spot of blue up at the top there where I could just move in. Oh God, I'm panicking. And grab all of that later. Perfect place for a dynamo roller right there. I'm setting it all up. You know, early game, if your opponent plays all their 312s and they make a big square of plain blue or yellow, whatever side you're playing, whatever color you're playing, I would just recommend you let that sit there. You don't touch it. You don't touch it until the last two turns of the game where you grab it all at the end. Because it's not like your opponent can put many cards on top of it, especially if it's a solid block of blue. They're not gonna be able to put a special right in the middle of that. Like right there, perfect place. I, and I, I managed to um, not do that. So <laughs> if I can just get one more point, but no, I can't very sadly. It passes on it, but it's okay. I get my ink storm and I can get what is that? How many points is that? I waste two points. That's okay. Ten points for me Had I only gotten more special built up. I wasted two there. It's okay. I just made it. I just made it Walk seats. I'm surprised I didn't get any ties because a lot of the games are gonna be very very close I think you'll find if you ever play against Anybody on box seats like it box seats is banned in normal tournament play usually because it's so ridiculous and it's so prone to getting ties but yeah, I The most ties you're ever gonna get are gonna be on box seats. I'm telling you right, right now All right, so let's move on to match number two. I get my dynamo roller Great and my e-leader let's block off my opponent Just try to get a big wall there perfect perfectly done. If I can get a special um, right beside their their special point there, that would be great because I would uh, secure that entire left side all to myself. So if I could just fizzy bomb that right there. Oh, okay. That's okay. Now if I get the octo guy and flip it upwards, that'd be a perfect wall all the way across, pretty much. There'd be no way to, for me to get in there. But, Storstil has completely blocked me off. So, there's not much I can do. Oh. Uh, box seats, it, it feels like you're either attacking or you're defending. It's like, there's not much you can do, but it's both, I feel like. That's just me though, I don't know. Because if you're defending, oh, because you can't place giant cards. It sucks, it sucks so hard. <laughs> All right, let's grab me some special. Don't know. I'm just sort of sitting on that left side. I'm not too worried about the left side because there's not much Sorcerer can do to get in there. Ah, going for one special, setting up another two. Double Octo Stamp, yeah! Um, Sorcerer's done a great job of dispersing their special points all over the place. Um, I don't have a lot of cards that would be able to get through there. I could s put down my little Judd. Um, Grab myself maybe seven points, six points. First we'll manage to get through with the explosure, splosher all the way to the side. Let's see here, four turns left. I'm gonna go for my little Judd. I'm gonna get my one point. Grab myself a special. Putting me at four for the last three turns. Not too bad, oh actually five for the last three turns. He gave me one? I don't know. Plastic squiff, squiff, squiffer. Almost perfect placement. Oof, okay, grab myself seven points. Not much Sorcerer can do except go straight down. Yeah, and they do it. Look at that. Oh, three empty blocks left on tur two turns left. But now they've got a big empty space up at the top there. But there's not much I can do because, let's see. No, none of, me, none of my big cards will really fit. Maybe I could get in a Ink Storm at the top? Yeah, nice. Ink storm, so good because if you think about it, it's really just an eight by or a four by two block of eight there, and the little arms you can flip them around, you can turn them as much as you want. It's it's pretty versatile. It doesn't look like it, but it actually is. The little feet and the little arms, it's not too much of a hindrance. So I just managed to make that with my ink storm. Moving on to the next one, third game, out of five. Oh. Once again, same deck. It's a, it's a pretty good deck so far, I think. So I'm gonna redraw on that because I've got too many small cards and that fails me. 
and I get that. So if you've got like four big cards in your entire small deck, in your entire box seats deck, and you get one, I wouldn't be too greedy. I would just keep your one big card and then just hope you top deck the rest of them. Because again, you're running a huge massive risk of losing uh, your one big card. Like it's not worth it. Just hang on to your big cards and you should be okay most of the time. Ooh, running out of time. Very scary when the timer goes to five seconds. Bamboozler. Ooh. They're trying to block me off still. They have access to the bottom. Um, and no, they have access to the whole thing. I didn't block them off at all. Probably should have did a better job of that. Wowzers. Okay, so I'm gonna splat bomb grab myself three points. Cause we've got a nice big empty spot in the top left. Ursula hasn't blocked me off yet. Like if you're not blocked, that's basically space that you're gonna be taken later. Grab myself two points, give them one by accident. Oops. Not enough time to think. Like I watched a couple of the, I didn't make it all the way to the end of this tournament in case you didn't guess. This video is only an hour long. Um, but I watched a couple other players. Ooh, that was a weird move. Um, and, and they were really good at place, like they would wait until the last second to place their card, but they would always place it perfectly. Um, like who was it? Uh, who won this one? Hold on. I think it was showers and then double cookies made it pretty far and there Who knocked me out? Was it double? No, it was Luigi fan. Luigi fan knocked me out Um, but yeah, those those players they really great at, at, at box seats watch They're like I didn't get any of the footage from them, but you should uh, I'll, I'll link the, the, the video on demand in, in the bottom there because the other people in do, uh, our, our commentators are really, really good and they get all the good players videos like because meanwhile I'm, I'm still playing. I can't watch, can't keep open a million windows and watch three million other players play at the same time as me. It's too much for me. Okay, so what am I doing here? I'm panicking, that's what I'm doing here. Another pass, randomly picks my e-leader, 4K scope, very sad. Um, let's see if I can turn it around, probably not. Let's see, e-leader up the top? Oh, 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 no. You wanna think very carefully about these. Oh, I didn't manage to block them off, but I did manage to grab a bunch of points. Let's see if that saves me. Come on. Nope, it does not. They did a really good job of just taking up a lot of space and I was sort of meandering around the edges, not really doing anything. All right, let's go on to the next game. Box seats, once again. So easy to host, you don't have to ask your opponent for their counter pick and whatnot. I never like hosting. Like, I'm scared I'll forget the timer or something. All right, I would hold on to this, but I redraw instead. And of course I get all small cards. Never redraw. <laughs> if you've got three or four big cards, just hang on to your one big card in your hand. It's gonna be okay. Surprisingly, they have an ultra stamp in this deck. It's, um, I don't, I'm not sure if maybe they picked the wrong deck, because this is weird. I think this deck looks very different from the rest of it, or maybe I'm just not paying attention, or maybe they just never drew their ultra stamp. I don't know. But anyway, E-Leader, put near the edge so I can set up a few points. They're probably gonna go push into my zone. Oh, nope, and they're trying to block me off. And then once again, they're doing that thing, big blotch of open blue space for me to take on turn three or four. Can't wait to grab it. Four points for me. That's always such a good feeling when you can set up a bunch of special points just like that. All right, so now I'm gonna try to get some access into their zone and I'm panicking a little. Explosure. I don't like explosh, explo explosure, explosher, um, because like it's it's very chunky and the special point is all the way at the end. It's great for like maybe a longer kind of map, but for a map like this, it's just giving you free space to take later or your opponent to take later. All right, Octopod, so I've set up a special point right into the middle of their section. I'm just gonna leave that alone for now 
and then grab more special points. Just, just sort of bide my time because they can't place anything else in their zone. They're gonna keep placing things into, like, on top of mine, but I've got my cards just all over the place. So, right now I could start specialing on. I'm just sort of leaving that section alone, grab myself another two special, even though I really don't need it. And I'm gonna probably try to edge my way into the top right corner before a final turn, Ink Storm or Takaroka right smack in the center. So what am I doing here? I look it's like I'm just... Oh, what the heck am I doing? Way too early! Way too early! Big blotch of yellow that they can take later. Um... They've got five points. I'm down to three. This is a very dangerous position for me. I'm not a huge fan of what I did there. I really should have saved that dynamo roller for the very end. I guess I was worried that they would do something weird and, and screw me, but it's okay. It worked out. I've got a ton of points, um, and I've gotten my special points just sort of all over the place. It's not likely that they would play something big and win the game from this. Nice. All right. So that's the third game for me. 54 points. Like, it becomes very easy to tell who's gonna win around turn three or four. Like, there's not much you can do if your points are properly placed. You have a lead, you have lots of special points. Your opponent's not gonna be able to turn that around very quickly. Hold on, there's something on my microphone. Ew! Okay. Hold on to it. Yes, okay. You have a dynamo roll in your hand. Don't even, don't even think about uh, <laughs> redrawing. You know, I think I started to learn that after, after that match. All right, a turn one, three, twelve. A bold move from Nebula. I'm going for the Elier. Not too low, not too high, and it didn't even touch me. Great. So I've got a lot of the bottom left. They could have something long to block me off. So I'm gonna keep moving around. Staying on the edges, because it's not super likely that people would go for the edges on early turns. Except it's not really early turn. Um, perfect little Judd placement, but big blob of yellow that they could grab later. Not much I could grab from Nebula at this point. Maybe the left side that they've kind of got blocked off. I'm just going to start setting up special at this point, because I'm just going to wait it out. Bide my time until the very end where I can take back all of that blue. Fizzy Bomb. Ooh, grab myself a special. Double Fizzy Bomb. Nice. Alright, but yeah, Nebula's doing a really good job. There's no big blobs of blue left defenseless. Grab me some points. And I'm just sort of placing my points all throughout the map. Worried about that blob of yellow in the center and that's about it. The hell am I doing? What is that? Panic? Maybe panic. I think I already played my... Uh, little buddy, right? I don't know. Torpedo I find very hard to use on this map, so I wouldn't. I took it out of this deck. I had I had my deck before for Ooh, Hollow Octopod. My 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 box seats deck. It had basically every single small card and then three really big cards. Didn't work out. I I like this deck configuration. I'm starting to panic here. Just sort of place a dynamo roller here for some reason. Or not dynamo roller, I, uh, they placed a dynamo roller, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, they did a really good job here, um, blocking me off. Look at this, now I'm struggling, no seconds left. Oh, and I just make it! I just make it into the center there, ooh! Triple ink straight from them, last turn, very scary. It is very scary to gamble it all on the very last few turns, um, because they can pull out something crazy. And I lose this one, Octo Stamp for Octo Stamp. I get my four points, but I think they also probably do the same. I didn't quite see. Cheers, Stain, big man fan. Wait, how did I win that? Hold on, 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 hold on. Let me just back that up. Um, where do they place that? Uh, huh? Okay, no. Oh, I I was ahead. Oh, okay. What in the heck? I was confused for a second. I thought I was losing at that point. Oh. <gasps> Very scary. <laughs> oh man. Alright. Let's game one game. Here's game two. Frederick Crumbs. <laughs> I love my little Fred Crumbs badge in the bottom there. Love him so much. 
So crunchy, so dumb. Oh, perfect hand. Well, not perfect, but great hand. Dynamo Roller and the E-Leader. Love to have really long cards. And because I'm scared that they'll play really offensively like that and I don't want to get blocked, I'm playing the Dynamo Roller at the bottom. Which I think is a great move because it sort of blocks off your opponent from getting in there because it already starts to build a little difficult wall down into the center. They should have flipped that stinger around, if you ask me. Totally okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to get into that bottom left corner when you've got that many blocks on that side there. Um, that was a weird move. I shouldn't have placed it there. I guess I was just trying to take up space. So positioning a special point in the center, um, sort of mixing it up into the middle of my big blob of yellow. Still not a great defense in my big, big blob of yellow. So I want to get something else in there. That's an okay move. Nice, and it, it overlaps, so that's basically a free blocker for me, and for them, I suppose. Grab myself a couple special. It's looking real good for me right now. But Nebula has a lot of chances to catch up. Woo, if they can just grab a little bit more special and block me off, but I'm not going to let them. I'm going to try to grab more space. Put in another blocker. It uh, would have been better if it was pointed on the bottom left uh, instead. Had I put in a fizzy bomb, perhaps. Or I could have used my octopod to block him off there. Another blocker. Not going for the special points, just going for the block. I've got a ton of points right now. Unfortunately, all my big cards, I can only place them in my zone because Nebula's got their special points pretty evenly placed. And early Tenta Missiles, that's going to give me a bunch of squares to take now. Thank you. Going to grab myself, let's see here. Yeah, flip it around. Oh, okay, that was weird. I guess I started panicking. I should have put it back on the other side. That's okay. I can also put in my E-Leader. Yep. Kind of early. No, it doesn't fit. Flip it over. Uh, uh Vertically. 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 Okay, that's... Nope, run out of time. Oh, goodbye, Takaroka. That's gonna be deadly for me. Unless... Unless... I flip in my E-Leader now. That's gonna be okay. That's not gonna be so bad. Not great placement. I should have pushed it over one, but that's... That's alright. Let's see if that gets me over. It should. Look at all that special points that I've just wasted. I had like six left over. That's crazy. All right, I take another one. Um, that's game two for me. All right, box seats. But yeah, playing against real people, very different from playing against the CPUs. But the CPUs give you a great idea of what you should work on. Like if you're consistently losing to Fred Crumbs, but you're consistently winning against uh, staff, maybe that just means your deck is too small or you're not playing aggressively enough against Fred Crumbs. Or conversely, if you're constantly winning against Fred- Oh, flip it over! What are you doing? If you're constantly winning against Fred Crumbs, but you can't beat staff, you need to balance out your points more, play more defensively, maybe. It depends. Um, Y'all are free to just, uh, actually, no, go into the, into the TBS Discord and, and ask about your deck. Like, people aren't, um, always available to help out with, like, what exactly, but if you post a picture of your deck and be like, why am I always getting blocked, someone will be able to help you. If you just sort of post a vague, like, picture of your deck and be like, how can I improve? It's really hard to give solid advice for something like that. So if you really want good advice, you got to be very specific. Okay, so I've got a big square of yellow down at the bottom left there. Perfectly defenseless. I've got to start building up a wall here. What am I doing? Very easy for them to take. And I am ahead in points. But it probably won't be for long because they have set up a lot of special here. But I don't think the blade would be able to access it. And turn five, early, grabbing a bunch of points. And look at that, beautiful ink strike right in the middle there. It's too bad that I, I take up um, a bunch of their squares. So I'm still ahead, it's still okay. I'm going to, I should special that. Or I guess I could place it in the corner. That's like the probably the worst place you can put a special block in the corner. On the edges, in the corner, terrible. Um, 
because unless your opponent is running a whole bunch of straight lines, uh, the edges are probably not a good place to block off, because like, what's gonna get in there? Hardly anything. I don't even really worry about the edges. Alright, so I, I'm probably gonna take this game. Um, even if they play something huge down the center, I still have a lot of points that I could use to grab back. Alright, so had they not placed the Dynamo Roller here, I probably would have specialed something into my own zone because it's very obvious that I would have placed something, or uh, that the opponent's gonna play something. Like, once you get to a certain point on box seats, you are able to read what your opponent will do because, like, they don't have that many choices. Like, if you have a big chunk of yellow, uh, completely defenseless, of course your opponent's gonna play there. So you can, if you leave a little open square, you can get in there later. But that's kind of a hard thing to set up in the moment, you know? You got 10, uh, 10 seconds to think about it. All right, and this is my final one, I believe. I get knocked out super hard by Luigi fan, and then I am down into loser's bracket. Let's see, how long do I last in loser's bracket? Um, I'm placed into round six of loser's bracket and I do one more and then that's it. Oh, I wish I got to, I ha still haven't fought a lot of our really, really strong players. Um, like if you join the discord, you'll see what I mean. It's the same, it's the same uh, cast of characters taking, the, taking all the events over and over again. And also, if you are unable to play this event on Saturday, or TBS's events on Saturday, you can always join Duel On, which is the uh, 25 hours later. <laughs> and I've done one of them so far, but like, Saturdays I'm always free, Sundays I'm always doing something or other, so it's very hard for me to get into Duel Ons. But that's, that's like more... It, it, those events are, are, I feel like they're bigger. Duelons events. All right, so I'm going all the way around the center here, or around around the center here, around the edges. Uh, I'm not taking the center at all. I'm just sort of letting them have it, which is a weird, weird choice. You don't want your opponent to have any space. Although, if you are forced to let your opponent have space, I think the center would be better than the edge because it's easier to take the center later. Like, I can take that whole left chunk in the top there with an ink storm. Looks like I'm just trying to set it up there. Yeah, there we go. Like, you don't have time to experiment. Like, in games where you get a minute to think about it, um, I will just, um, just sort of experiment with what I can play later on and set up later. So I will just, um, check all my cards, place them all over the place, because you've got a whole minute to think about it. But here, once you select your card, you're pretty much locked in. You don't have enough time to pick another, um, hit B, pick another card, put it all down, you have to flip it and stuff. No, once you pick your card, that's it on a 10 second tournament like this. All right, so I've got a pretty okay lead so far. Not enough special though, so I am getting worried. Um, they've got tiny little bits of blue dispersed throughout the map. It's very good for them. They have a lot of areas where they can grab special points from me. Especially with that early, yeah, with that, that weirdly early ink storm. But now I can grab all of that from them later. Like, I didn't set up enough good special points. I should have placed that one lower, actually. That's okay. They're gonna pass on a rapid blaster. I like the rapid blaster for this map because it's nice and chunky. Fills in a lot of good spaces. Great for grabbing special, but it's also kind of long. Like a long card for this, it's not the same as long cards for other maps, of course. Like five cards, or five across, will even be too hard to place on box seats. All right, moving on. I didn't even, did I win or did I lose? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not paying attention. I'm too busy thinking about Fred Crumbs. <laughs> He's just a crunchy guy. He's just a big himbo. He loves his shoes. All right, great, another Dynamo Roller. I'm edging out a little bit more. I wanna try to get points in the center. 
Oof, big explosion right in the center. Looks like I'm forced to go around the edges again. Very careful about my special placement. Ah, oh, nice! Blocked all the way around. So oh, I'm still ahead in points. Cool, cool, cool. Um, trying for the tri slasher to block things off. <laughs> three whole points! Gonna block you off with three whole points. Alright. I may weirdly go for the Rapid Blaster Deco to block me off at the top there, I suppose. But that leaves me open to move up um, with the right side. But I don't do that because what I want to do is I want them to build up a big block of blue because I've got a nice special point down in the center of the right side there that I can use later. So I'm going to focus on building a wall here to keep them out of my zone. They're not building a wall into their zone yet because I guess maybe they don't realize what I'm doing. So I'm going to splat bomb, try to grab, yep, build and keep building my wall. And they also splat bomb, so it's a double wall for us. It's still okay, I still have access into their zone. I can get a... Can I fit an ink storm in there? Ooh, maybe not quite. Nope, not quite. Ah, and they've tried, they've managed to get into my bottom area. But I could just octopod into the bottom, keep them from getting a special, unless they also have an octopod. Or they could special it. Let's see. They don't. They still have that big explosion sized hole in the center that I can grab. Four turns left. I don't want to do an early ink storm. That's a weird move. Classic Swiffer. Oh, flip it around, flip it around, flip it around, flip it around. No! Oh, had I flipped it around, I could have grabbed myself two special, but no. I wasted two special instead. That was a that was a horrible mistake. If I had just flipped it around. Oh, <laughs> love watching myself back later on. Once I have a clear mind to think about these, like, I'm always so nervous during these, even though there's no reason to be. And they e-leader right down the center, which leaves me a ton of space had I also... No, I'm not going to be able to fit that because there's that little nubbin, you dummy. Flip, put it back. Oh no. Oh no, I'm running out of time. So I very panicked, put down a little Judd. If you are playing a... A uh, 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 e-leader. You're not going to be able to get your e-leader on top of your opponent's e-leader <laughs> because the little nubbins are not going to line up. Your special point's going to block it, so don't even try. <laughs> oh, it's going to be. Um, let's see. Oh, that's close. Oh, that's way too close. Oh, that's very, very scary. Did I win the last one? I think Luigi Fan wins next three then. Because somehow, there is still 20 minutes in this video. <laughs> Alright, Frederick Kroms, once again. Haven't let me down too hard yet. Yet. So, I'm pretty sure I lose the next ones. So let's see where my big mistakes are. We're gonna flip it around now. Where did I screw up? Shouldn't have redrawn on that. It's okay, I get basically the same hand. E-leader, flip it around, get that into the center. Nice. They're gonna heavy splatling all the way across the map. Very smart. Try to block me off, but you can't really block people off with a, with a splatling because it's gonna be touching their opponent's um, spawn point. But it does take up a lot of the map right down the center there. Again with the exposure, big chunk of blue that I can take later. I managed to get my diamond roller, but it's too late. There's not enough space because it's four across, four down. If it wasn't four. Um, down and maybe it was like three down that would totally be fine I try not to have a lot of cards that are wider than two you know like I really like my e-leader no scope it fits great around the edges because look at this when you watch people play box seats they tend to go around the center first Leaving the edges completely open. Like, look at that. I, all that left side is available for me to take, but I just don't have the cards for it. Alright, I'm really struggling here. I'm not able to get a good foothold. I can't grab myself a lot of space, and it's going to be very hard for me to grab their space because their blue blocks are just sort of all over the place. Not a really good big chunk. And I don't have enough specials to do anything drastic right now. I'm not going to be able to play my Dynamo. I'm not going to be able to play my Takaroka. 
like the special points right now are crazy. None of them are too far to the edge, but also in the center is not enough for me to get through. Crab tank is surprisingly very good in box seats because you can't really counter it unless you also have a crab tank because it's so spaced out you can't just like slap an ink storm on top of it and call it a day you're gonna cover like what two spaces crab tank is great and i wish i had it um because there's no other card that's quite shaped like that like a lot of the other specials they're shaped like other cards like you place down a booyah bomb you can slap down a little jug right in the middle and grab a lot of the points out of it you slap down an ink storm on top of a booyah bomb gonna grab a lot of points out of it but nothing's quite shaped like a crab a crab tank so i feel like that's a pretty safe card to place in a uh box seats deck as long as you can place it because you really have to think about the shape of it oh Double three twelves, Trizuka. Whoa, that's that's crazy. Um, I personally would never run double three twelves because you really need every special point you can get. But since I was sort of wasting a lot of special points, like right now I'm wasting two, I totally could have space for another three twelve in my deck. Um, so you really gotta experiment. Like, take your time with your Fred Crumbs box seat staff deck. Uh, find your combos. Find, like, study where your opponents like to play, which is the center, mostly. Um, if you can get a, a grasp on... Oh, this is a great hand. On whether your opponent is defensive or offensive. That'll tell you where you want to play uh, on your... On, on on following games like I I don't think I was paying attention much with this I should have flipped it over oh what am I doing <laughs> I guess Luigi fan is pretty defensive they'd like to block off their area but I mean that's pretty much all you can do on a map like this you know so I'm not quite sure oh lose out my special point but so do they let's see because I'm a very offensive player so if you are able to guess where I am going to play, which is very easy because I, I, I'm, I'm going to tend to go for moving into your zone. Um, if you block off your zone, where am I going to go? Nowhere. But then again, playing offensively against an offensive deck is also very effective, which I have found. Whenever I play against an offensive uh, an, uh, uh, an opponent who's just as offensive as me. We're both basically just circling around each other. Like I did a really like, um, what was it? On Main Street, I went all the way up their, my, their left side. They went all the way down the right side. And then we just circled around each other. That's how offensive players play. It's crazy. All right. Defensive players against a defensive player though. Uh, it just leaves the center open. And then it's just a matter of whoever takes it first. It's a weird. It's weird to play against two defense, the defensive player while you're playing defensively. I tend not to. I'd rather go for the offensive than anything. Just because it's easy, you know. It's just easy. All right. So I've got some big chunks of blue that I can take here. I'm looking okay in terms of space, but in terms of special, it looks like I'm struggling. I've got two locked into the sides there that I'm gonna have to grab later. I could get. A Takaroka in right now in this moment they're gonna go for the early crab tank a lot of big splotches of blue for me to take up at the top and at the bottom they're moving up in points very scary what am I doing no what am I doing oh you know what would have been a great move if I had gotten that Elyr and placed it right at the bottom there but no I panic I panic and place a Splattershot Jr. I should take out the Splattershot Jr. It scares me all right but now I'm gonna struggle for points here Okay, come on, two more points for me. And that's, see, it's unnecessary again. I'm wasting points. Um, but yeah, that's what I was talking about before, before I got distracted. If you can figure out exactly how many special points you need to play all of your big cards. Oh no, struggling. Flip back, flip back. Oh, I think I, I, no, I can't find it. I can't find it. And I time out. I should have just went for the E-Leader 4K right at the bottom there. Oh man. But yeah, just, uh... 
if you have five cards, no, maybe four big cards. So that's going to be uh, 15 cards or 15 points plus three. You don't need that many. Um, you're not going to draw all of them. So really you only need maybe eight points or so at the most. Towards the end, that is, towards the end. Um, but yeah, just experiment with math. Uh, I, maybe re I'd recommend uh, at the end of every game, just note how many special points you have left. If you consistently have like three or four sitting around, maybe swap out one of your uh, cards so you're able to use those special points. I hate wasted special points, but man, when you're in a panic like this, there's not much you can really do. I'm glad I have this video so I can take a look at like what I do wrong here <laughs> and maybe hopefully improve. Probably not. My big mistake right here, giving them a special point. That was a weird move. Although I do manage to grab their special point from their explosure, which is okay. Grab myself one more point, block off. Well, you can't really block them off because they've got a special point right there. So, but anyway, I just need access into that big corner of blue at the top left there. And I panic, go for the points. Not great. Great placement for pr pretty much all my big cards. Right down the middle there, like I could fit an E-Leader if I had the points. I could fit a Dynamo Roller if I had the points. I could fit... Pretty much anything. It's great. Never, you never want to have that setup where your opponent uh, can basically visualize where they're going to place their cards. You want to slam all your special points in the center, keep them guessing, you know? Octopod. Weird move in the top corner. Um, I got a lot of special points built up. I should probably start using them. Oh, I should have pushed it forward a little bit. That's okay. Lost that on what? Two points? Sometimes it is effective to just play an early giant 15 pointer card or a 13 pointer card if possible right down the center just to scare your opponent a little. If you know your opponent is easily uh, intimidated by a big old, like look at that, look at that. That's very scary taking back all my points. Um, if you can just do that just to mess with their head a little bit. I don't know. Is that, a, is that a cheap move? Maybe. Is it an effective move? Also, maybe. Oh, and I passed on the Dynamo Roller. I should not have. I probably could have found a place to play it, but I did not. And don't, don't think too hard about it. Flip it back, flip it back, flip it back, flip it back, put it back. <laughs> don't think too hard about it. Huh. All right, so I'm gonna even that out a little bit more. Last turn though, my mistake. Didn't build up enough special. I have no special. I wasted all my special with that early E-Leader, which wasn't a safe move. Because <laughs> it was left defenseless. And they're going to try Zuka right down the center and win the whole thing. Knocking me down to the loser's bracket. Good job, Luigi fan. Good move. Luigi fan made it to the, what? Uh, I think the grand finals because they got knocked out by showers in the next round right after this tournament seven time tournament champion showers um and they get knocked down to the losers bracket uh the final one final match against rose dragon and they win that but they get knocked out again by showers in the grand finals very sad Luigi. okay let's skip this where am i oh i forget to hit pause oh woo okay so my last battle is against Hawken, who was knocked into the loser's bracket by... If I can find it, hold on. Looking at the thingy. Ah! Gotta make it bigger, it's too small. That's an okay hand. Good medium-sized hand. So where am I? I play against Josiah, Sorcel, Nebula, Luigi Fan, then I get knocked out. And meanwhile, Hawken... Hawkins started in the loser's bracket. Oh my gosh. Where, where, hold on, where is, where are they? They're not even, I can't even see them on, on the normal bracket, on the, on the winner's normal bracket. What in the heck? There they are. They get knocked out by showers in the first round. And then they make it all the way through the, basically the entire loser's bracket. They also play against Sorcil. Um, they play against N, they play against Grubdarlin. 
They play against Dr. Potato, and then against me. And they beat me. Horribly. This is my last match. <laughs> So what have we got here? They have set up a lot of special, basically an entire wall, all on the top right side. Great big chunk of blue that I am not given access to. So I'm kind of doing the same here. I am putting down my chunks of yellow into the center, not giving them a lot of space to grab later. And I perfectly manage to get an E-leader right into their zone. While I do give them the special, I totally wasted it. Total waste, because they managed to grab all of my spot. Like, even if you're able to play a card that's really big and chunky, uh, maybe don't if you're in a dangerous spot like that, because like, it's very obvious they were setting up a special. It's weird that they didn't play that, um, the card right beside it to grab the special. Um, but it's very obvious they were going to, so I don't know why I played something there. Very weird move. Um, but anyway, big chunk of blue in the center for me to grab later. I'm not doing great at setting up a wall um, in the top right, but I am safe there for now until they did that, until they do the suction bomb. <laughs> because um, you still have to basically place two cards to get into my zone, um, unless maybe they had something really long. Let's see here. They're still pushing into my zone. They've still got that center left defenseless. If I had a nice long card, I'd be able to get it in there. Like that. I think it's way too early to be playing Attack Girl, guys. That should have been a last turn kind of thing. Because now what am I going to do with four points? I guess I could try to struggle with my Ink Storm. Um, but I can't see it right now, so I'm sure that me in the moment is also not going to be able to see it. Three seconds left. I can't find it. I give up and I go for an Octo Missile and I can't place the Octo Missile. And I end up passing anyway. Total loss for me. Too much panic. Like, the further I go into- like, after I've been playing for about, um, uh, an hour, that's when I start getting way worse. <laughs> like, I'm always consistently able to make it into top eight, but then I can never move past that because by that point, I'm too panicked. Like, maybe if I were in a smaller tournament that maybe started with eight people, I'd probably be able to make it a little bit further because I'd be able to focus more. Um, but yeah, a lot of these tournaments managed to go for four hours. This one lasted for, what, three hours or so because of the short turns? But it was, uh, best of, best of five, so it did go on for a pretty long time, still. It's very fun. I don't know. If I have time, I might look into smaller tournaments, but I just really don't have time on Saturdays, Sundays. Like, I basically dedicate my entire Saturday to just playing for the, the tables or battle server tournaments and the rest of the day I spend doing chores like I can't do two or three um, tournaments in a day that's crazy all right so I'm trying to build a wall here Hawken is pushing into my zone with their special they want in into that wall um, there's no way I'm gonna be able to keep blocking them off I really should have flipped it around because now Hawken has the opportunity to push into my zone, but they don't, so luckily for me. And I'm gonna need to point a special towards the bottom left there if I want access to that big glob of blue. I'm still building my wall. I, am I not noticing that they have a blue pointed directly into my zone there at the bottom left, kinda? Oof. If I can block them off there, that entire chunk of yellow is basically mine for the rest of the game. But I guess I don't see them, or maybe I'm too focused on the bottom left, right, bottom right of the map, because I want it. Should not have passed on that. I probably should have just played something small. They're going to be able to get into my zone if I don't start blocking it off. Fizzy bomb, fizzy bomb. Map is just half and half. They have a little bit of a lead though. That's a weird move. I basically waste two spots. I could have flipped it around, but I probably didn't have time to think. And they're gonna steal Eel right into my top corner there, giving them access. So I think I just give up at this point. Accidentally give them two special points. Always a mistake. You wanna block off your opponent from getting special points, not give them special points. 
like if you can consistently get a big um like place your card so there's a bubble um like a one point bubble beside all of their special points that's a pretty safe move because it's not like they're gonna consistently have to, like the only way to get out of that is to special and place a big card on top of that wasting all of their space just for one special point so if you can get your opponent to waste their special points that's great um I should have did this earlier. Why didn't I? Oh, I didn't have loads right earlier. I should have just blocked up that corner earlier. They're gonna take that one as well. Because I just don't have the points. Oh, so close. Wasted points. But yeah. Um, deny your opponent their special points. Like, I accidentally did that to myself by placing the Takaroka one um, step too far to the right because I don't have a lot of diagonal cards I don't have a splat bomb I don't have any uh, really small cards oh look I did it again I did it again see if you can somehow do that to your opponent that'd be great because now to get that special point I would have to special to get it I'd have to sacrifice and waste a special to grab that um, and here again I am wasting a special point because I'm not gonna be able to grab that unless I special on Place in a little buddy or something. Waste a bunch of points doing so. Very weird move. Haven't built up any special. Luckily though, we've got that big perfect wall right down the center, which is great for me, not great for them because my special placement, oh no, I guess they can get in there too. So I'm gonna start building a wall on that side, leaving the top right open, top left open, for me to get up into their zone, if I can do it. I'm not doing it though, so that worries me. I should be moving up into their zone right now. I should not be placing a fizzy bomb down at the bottom. Although they're not blocking me off, they don't seem too too pressed to block me off either. Playing at a leisurely pace. Weird move coming from here at the bottom. I should be putting it up at the top there, grabbing myself some special points while also getting into their zone. See, had I flipped it over completely and placed it on top of that one on the far left there, that would have been great because then I'd still have space there. I'd be able to place um, my try slosher they are going to splat bomb into the bottom um, so what they're doing is building a wall because they're not going to be able to get into my zone with the way I've placed all my special points and then here we go again I still have that empty space one empty space right there denying me two points they're gonna start blocking me off the top there whoa okay so my area is effectively blocked off but theirs isn't. Um, so I'm trying to get in there. Now, I can see a perfect place to put an ink storm, but I know they're gonna, they're, uh, it's way too early to do it because it's very obvious. Way too obvious. They're gonna just cover that and then I'm gonna have nothing um, left to do. That, I should have saved that for the final turn. Um, my big mistake pretty much every single time was getting way too excited and placing, um, I'm using my special points way too early. Way too early. Like, just be patient with box seats, but not too patient. Because you only get three turns to flip it all around, basically, at the end. And look at this, I don't have the special points placed in there. Like, had I flipped over that um, spider shot and then placed a tri slosher into that little zone, I could have had access to their entire area, while meanwhile they had barely any access to my area. Oh, so Hawken takes that, and that is the end of that. I am knocked out of the loser's bracket. If we ever have a tournament like this again, I'm sure I would be able to fix my deck and focus more on- Oh, and then the video is over. Hold on. Let me just put something back on the screen so you have something to look at. Um, oh, actually, hold on. Let's turn on this. Here's the bracket. The loser's bracket, that is. Uh, where am I? Here's my run. I go from here to getting knocked out, and then I'm knocked out again very quickly. Oh, very sad. All right, but that was it for the Table Turf Battle Open number eight, April Fool's edition. If you want to see more of that, I will link in the description some of our commenters' videos. Um, I haven't even watched them yet because I've been so... I, okay, 
I totally forgot to film my Fred Crumbs video because I have really been going through it lately. But I'm better now. That's why I'm filming this video right now. So yeah, hopefully I can do more videos. Um, I've just been so busy lately. Anyway, I hope to see you in the next tournament maybe. Let me know if you want to join up in that. I'll, I'll put a billion links in my descriptions. Alright, see you guys at the tournament. Bye!